Hi, it's David Taylor, or Mr. Pelagonium, as people like to call me. Um, it's just post-show, post the post sort of virtual show that we put on over the weekend. Um, I've also got some other things to talk about regarding the greenhouse. So let's see what's going on. Hello again, well it's good to see you. Um, it's, we, we just sort of had the virtual show. It, it hasn't actually been judged yet. I'm filming this on Monday the 15th um, of June. Following the show, um, it was it didn't quite work out as we had hoped actually. There were one or two issues with uploading the little videos that I was explaining um, how to do, but um, it, it's a bit of a learning curve of course, a virtual show, so no doubt we will, um, sort of uh, overcome some of these things if we ever do something like that in the future. But hopefully next June, uh, a year's time, we'll be hopefully back to normal. But um, we can but wait and see. Um, I've had quite a few good plants that sort of put on a, a good display. Uh, I'll just show you a few of those now. Um, this one come very well. This is a single um, basic zonal called Annie Grace. This is a really nice plant, single variety, single bloomer, and I would probably say in terms of single basic zonals, this is probably one of the best that I've ever grown. Not a great deal of effort, it did very well, it's withstanding the weight of the blooms, because they're single of course, there's a little bit less weight than a strong double, so um, I'll show you the problems with those I had with my point south in a moment. But um, that was pretty nice and uh, that come very well. It's got a lovely zoned leaf as well, which I particularly like about this plant. The fact that the, the single Annie Grace there had really held itself up. This is what can happen with uh, basics. This, I mean, it's not dry, this plant, but it is completely flocked. Now, there's a couple of ways you can prevent this. These blooms, firstly, are very, very heavy. Um, there's a lot of fairly lush growth on it. This has almost certainly received too much balanced feed. And what I should have done is given it a lot more high potash feed um, at the sort of main growing stage. Uh, and that's basically what causes the flopping. Um, potash really firms up stems. So if you ever want to, to get your stems of your plants much firmer, feed them with a good potash liquid feed. It really does stiffen up the plant in its entirety. Dwarf zonal bold cherub, again, always does exceptionally well for me. Never goes wrong. Um, always seems to produce the goods, and I've got a lot of younger versions of that as a two-year-old plant. Always does very well. And so it's always a good, a good dwarf. If you want a really good flowery dwarf, bold cherub, really good uh, plant, a John Gibbons variety. I showed you, I mean, I put on my Instagram page and things like that. I had a couple of decent, what we call Florabundas. These are basically overgrown dwarfs uh, in a six inch pot. So they're, they're much bigger than the standard dwarf grown in a four and a half inch pot. Uh, but uh, these, you know, there wasn't a class for these in the virtual show, and that was my own fault, because I am show secretary, so I, I did myself out of see, showing a few plants, but um, there was a good one there, that was quite a nice one. This is Gosbrook Susanna, named after the wife, of course, and I had another, another quite nice one there as well. But uh, very overgrown um, dwarfs, basically, in a six inch pot, which wouldn't be a normal pot to show a dwarf. Well, I had a Gosper Susanna actually as a dwarf underneath. There we are, that was a smaller version, actually grown in a standard dwarf pot of four and a half inches. And that was pretty decent. I mean, it, it, they come up um, quite well in the end. Of course, the challenge this year was um, that plants, because we've had so much sunny, warm weather, 
Um, it was very, very difficult to keep the plants back for the show, despite the fact that really the show was almost a week earlier than it would normally be held. But uh, in the end, I think I've more or less got my timing right. I think with some of my, my dwarfs which weren't ready, these are only just coming to their peak now. I really need to probably stop a, a week or two earlier, um, maybe up to about 20 weeks to ensure uh, that I get plants suitable for uh, show work. Um, we haven't yet made decisions. We probably will over the summer about when we may be having the annual show, Pelagonium annual show next year. Um, we will be tying up almost certainly with Fibrex Nursery again um, to have a gardener's gathering day at uh, their nursery. Um, but with the dates for that haven't been decided. Um, now I had a couple of decent Stellas, my own plant, Robin Louise. Um, this came just about spot on. This is in a six inch pot. Always does very well. It's interesting actually that in bright sunlight outside, uh, the leaves tend to go really dark bronze. Uh, and you get a slightly darker pink as well. When they're in a, a sort of semi-shaded greenhouse, um, the, the, the blooms are a bit paler and the leaves are a bit greener. Butterfly Brian West, this is a sport of a, a tricolour plant, tricolour miniature called Brian West. This is almost like the green leaf version, it's the butterfly version. Uh, a butterfly green leaf plant is basically a split between sort of standard green and a much lighter green, almost a sort of semi variegated type green if you like. Um, uh, but that one came very well. This was grown on from a, a dwarf that I had from last year, but it, it was always wanting to get away. So that looked pretty decent. Really good mat of bloom on it uh, and very, very strong growing. Now one or two other Florabundas that look pretty decent. I was very, very pleased with this one. We have got a head that's just going over there, but this is a really good white. Uh, this is one of the new ones. I sowed these seed, remember, a couple of years ago. Uh, and this, I think, is certainly one of the best ones of the bunch. I've grown this on as a Florabunda. There's a lot of following uh, bud from it, really putting on a good show, and I'll be very pleased with that. I will almost certainly get some cuttings off of that in order to grow on uh, and get, you know, a few smaller plants ready for years to come in terms of exhibition. Now, talking of uh, sort of cuttings, um, you may remember I did the video on cuttings, and some of these... The Shrivenham stars, I've got roots coming out the base of these already. Um, very, very interesting. Uh, they've rooted very quickly. I mean, the weather's generally been quite sort of warm, pleasantly warm, or into June. It has become very changeable, it does have to be said. We have been getting some rain at long last. Uh, but a lot of these have actually rooted because, of course, the cuttings that I took did have sort of base rough root on them, which was just ready to start putting their roots out to, um, to grow on. And that's clearly what's happened in this case. I've just got a slightly dud leaf, which I will take off. Um, and that, that's already rooted right down to the bottom of the uh, pot. I probably need to water that, actually. Um, but they have grown on very quickly. There's one or two that are still looking a little bit off colour. You can usually tell the difference between plants that haven't rooted, or cuttings that haven't rooted rather, and cuttings that have. And this is a, a, good, a good way to look at it. See this one here, this clearly hasn't rooted, but, it, but it's a very sort of dullish green. This is the, uh, the cutting that hasn't rooted at all yet. It probably will root, um, but it's certainly a cutting that is not yet taken. Whereas on the other hand, this one, look at this bright, vibrant green growing out from the tip of the growing point. And that clearly has rooted. Um, there isn't root at the bottom, but it is clearly putting root out. Uh, and that's the main difference you can tell. Um, if you've got a dull green with no sort of fresh growth on it, if you like, that cutting's not yet rooted. Yet if you've got vibrant green growing out the tip, um, that's almost certainly rooted. So you know when they're going to be ready for uh, moving on. I would always wait, as I said, um, in, the quest in the case of this one where the roots are beginning to come out the bottom. That's the time to pot them on. Now in terms of regals, um, this Sophia Pope was, uh, came out 
brilliantly. Um, it's really strange because with Zofia Pope, it's a plant that I almost get sort of every other year. I have a really good one every other year. And this year is one of the ones for um, Zofia Pope, one of the years for Zofia Pope. Um, it's right strange. I can guarantee next year now that I won't have a decent one. Uh, but it is really funny. I put this in the virtual show, but it's doing really well. Just beginning to go now. Some of the petals are beginning to drop. But, um, you know, that, that's a pretty decent plant, to be honest with you. Okay, so a little look round. Um, you can see here, realistically, uh, I've be really begun to cut my regals back because I don't want them getting completely wrecked uh, in the rain that our lovely British summer can bring sometimes. Um, there's still a few that I've got to do. Uh, obviously, zonals are much easier to, uh, to break the little flower um, stems off, so it is a much easier process. But um, this variegated Mr. Wren is, uh, is behaving itself and growing quite well. But I really do need to tie up some of these longer stems that are right at the top there. Just need to do a little bit of deadheading as well while I'm here. There we go, gets rid of that one. That's doing really quite well. I've got a giant version under there, which again, hopefully in a new glass house, that may be able to be a bit more of a prominent plant. Now, something that I do want to talk about, everybody knows that anybody who's been watching my channel over a period of time, I've always struggled a bit in this greenhouse. Not so much for the bench space, but, well, yeah, the bench space to a certain extent, because when the plants are in full bloom, they're all overhanging the benches. And this little two-foot gap I've got in the middle is just too much. So the decision has been made. I'm going to get a different greenhouse. I'm going to get an eight foot wide one, which will basically double the width of the, uh, of the gangway. It'll enable me to have a lot more plants underneath the benches. Um, it'll give me some extra room. I'm getting a longer greenhouse as well by four foot. This one's 14. I'm going to go out to 18. But one of the key things that I wanted to do, more particularly for the channel as much as anything else, is get my working bench back in the greenhouse, much like I used to do when I had my 12 foot wide one. And if you have a look up there, you can see when I used to have enough room to have my bench, my working bench in there. Very difficult for me in the um, having my workbench in the garage because it's quite dark in there. I can have a light on, but it's simply not the same. And I want to be able to take this channel forward. So I'm very much, Looking forward to it. It does mean I've got a monumental amount of work ahead of me. It's much easier, though, doing it in the summer. One of the problems that we had moving this particular glass house, which came from my former nursery, is that I actually was doing it in the middle of winter and it was awful. Um, you're under a great deal of pressure because my plants needed light and all the rest of it. They were stuck away in the garage, being kept, uh, being kept frost free. But doing it in the summer, all my plants can go outside, no problems with any temperatures. Uh, and so that's what I'm going to do. Uh, a lot of work to do, so I want to get a good, nice concrete floor as well as a base. Okay, so that's just about it from me today. I hope you uh, like this update. Obviously, after today, I am now going to be beginning to clear out. I mean, you've seen some of my regals that are actually now being cut back. That's really to save them to a certain extent from being wrecked in any rain that we get, which we can get in the UK in the summer. Um, but I will be stripping stuff down. Everything will be packed away in sort of corners in the garden. Um, and then I'll be working. Whether I do a bit of a, may do bits and pieces of videos on it, I don't know. But if I've promised any videos, I will still hopefully be able to do them. I know I spoke about doing one on regal cross-pollination and, uh, you know, getting seeds out of regals. Um, haven't done that yet, but we'll hopefully be able to um, put something together over the summer. I put a few snippets on my social media accounts at Mr. Pelagonium. Um, both on Twitter and Instagram, uh, but it's going to be quite an eventful sort of rest of summer. Um, so I'll see you again very soon. And in the meantime, happy growing. Please subscribe to this channel. And if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. 
You can follow Mr. Pelagonium on both Twitter and Instagram under Mr. Pelagonium. And you can follow the Pelagonium and Geranium Society on Facebook. Or you can visit the PAGS website at thepags.org.uk.